Kevin and Mike are here to give you great news. Nice. And welcome back to Great News. Great News. With Kevin Ryder and Mike Catherwood. Before we get to anything, Kevin. Yeah. You were very ill. I was very ill, yeah. I had uh, COVID for the second time. And that sucked. That sounds odd, though, because I, I admittedly am not one of those people who has been, like, researching a lot. It's just like, hey, tell me to wear a mask. Fine, I won't go out. Fine. Right, right. I don't know. But it doesn't, from what I've understood, is that, that's kind of difficult. Oh, right? no, I've had, I had a bunch of doctors um, on social media tell me it's not possible. Okay. It isn't possible. And I go, look, I only know what I've been told. Right. But I did have COVID over the holidays, and I did go to the ER on New Year's Eve. Yeah. And that's not where you want to be on New Year's Eve. No. And you were, um, you know, I hate to get all like uh, cutesy about it or, or get all sensitive right out of the gate, but you were like concerningly. Oh, yeah. It was, at it, some points. it was rough. At some yeah. points, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Now, yeah. I don't know that my body backed that up, but my mind certainly was. Well, yeah, that's the scariest thing is. Um, regardless of how sick you might actually be, when yes. you get to the point of like, is this the end? For yes. Me? That's, that's rough. I thought, right. I thought that one time I was like, I I'm not going to make it. I remember I was, I was, I went to a uh, small Island off of Seattle for Vashon Island, by the way, of Kevin and Bean fame. Nice. Get Bean lived for like 25 years. <laughs> um, um, I went to Vashon Island and I was up North with my, my wife's mom and I, you and I were corresponding, trying to get you know, everything off the ground with the show. And like the third day in a row, I talked to you and you're like, I'm um, still like 104 temperature. I, I didn't like, hit 104, but it, I, I was between 101 and 103. Either way. Like yeah. The, the, the like third day in a row that yes. I talked to you and you were still 100 plus. Yes. I Internally, I was like, all right, dude, well, take care of yourself. But I'm thinking like, dude, uh, man. He's... You thought I was going to die. No, but I thought, I thought like we might start thinking about not doing great news. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's the God's honest Well, we truth. gave it a try. We and had two, two episodes. The first bit of great news, Kevin, doing much better. <laughs> I'm sure still a little, you know, not 100%, but you're good enough that you're here. Have you ever had a fever dream? Yeah. I apparently, and by the way, so drained of energy that I can't, I, thinking about getting out of bed and going to the restroom mm -hmm. felt like I'm going to have to climb Mount Everest. Like right. it was that big. Yeah. But I'm running around at night chasing people that aren't there. And there was one time where my daughter was taking care of me and she heard some noise and it was like 1 a.m. And I was sitting on the floor and she said, Dad, what are you doing? And I said, shh. And she said, what are you doing? And I got mad at her and I slammed the door closed because there were people in the room with me that I had to defend oh, her from. No. Like it was that crazy. And then she came over, put me to bed, and I had some cuts on my leg. She put bandages on. She said I was mad at her. Oh, no. It was craziness. Cuts so that on happened. your leg means you're trying to kick said people. Probably, yeah. yes. Probably. Dude. But so here's, here's the warning. I'm having trouble not coughing. Okay. So I'll do my best. That's great, yeah. But there is a residual cough, and that happens sometimes in the middle of a sentence. Can you... Um... Just try your best to like lean into me when you're doing it. Yeah. Just oh yeah. Like right. Cl the closer. I'd be back. happy to. Okay. You want me to stand up and walk over? Yeah. If you okay. could. Right. If you could, you know what? Just French kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> this is a podcast that's all about great news because when you turn on the news, it's negative on repeat, on repeat, on repeat. And you watch, I know people that watch news all day Yeah. and they're depressed. Yeah. And it's like, dude, you're watching the same story a hundred times. Well, and also I will cut the mainstream media some slack as someone who has had the kind of strange experience of working for mainstream news organizations. I mean, I, I work with Dr. Drew. I worked for CNN for three or four years, um, and which is, yes, <laughs> which is not possible. In, insane. Um, but you got, you got to understand, like they are a ratings driven. Yeah, of course station just like any any other entertainment in entity they are trying to and uh the research shows beyond a shadow of a doubt the more upset angry or scared you the viewer get the better their rating so th yeah. there's a contrived effort you know so we're bringing you just the opposite of that we're bringing you great news and let's start with the nfl i don't know if you saw the buffalo <laughs> bills <laughs> <clears throat> wow! I was going right into the first story without the intro. Intro! 
Yeah, you know it is the intro! Say goodbye to the sad hello to... No. Intro! <laughs> yeah, you know it is the intro! Say goodbye to the... Say good... Say hello to the happy goodbye to the blues. Kevin and Mike are here to give you great news. We can edit that in post. Sure. Done. No problem. I can't see that. Yeah. So yeah he's holding on the side. Listen, move, move the mic down. Okay. down. Thank you. You know, you could have just done that. <laughs> first off, first and foremost, like, before Kevin gets to what I know to be an amazing story, uh, a round of applause for our production team. Yes, Every please. single episode, it gets better and better because they are constantly working to make all Kevin and my crazy uh, requests a reality. And uh, they definitely were responsible for getting this show up and running because Agreed. Kevin and I are not uh, not savvy. We're, We're not savvy in any way. No. Uh, are you sure that the microphone isn't better in my, front of my face? Has anyone thought that can through? We, can, we, can we, like, in post, make the microphone a giant cock? And then that way... It's I'm going to vote that out. No. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. All right. Let's talk about uh, the NFL. The Buffalo Bills beat the Jacksonville Jaguars 17-3. Mm -hmm. uh, to 3 over the weekend and the quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, Lamar, um, Lamar, Lamar Jackson. Odom. That's who oh, I was yes. thinking. It's the only name that came to my mind was Odom. Uh, got a concussion. Yeah. In the second half, his head snapped back, hit, hit his uh, helmet in the end zone. It didn't look like they was yeah, that it was bad. one of those weird ones. It was one of those weird ones. And uh, they had to take him back and go through concussion protocol and he was unable to return. And that was incredibly rough. Well, the Bills fans are known as the Bills Mafia. Yes. And they are crazed over the top fans. And they wanted to do something for Lamar's life. They wanted to help him with his charity, which is a really cool thing. It's unbelievable because not only, we all know, look, NFL fans are horrible. Yes, <laughs> they're terrible. Agreed. But, um, if you've ever been to Buffalo, you understand very quickly why, because it's kind of remote in upstate New York. It's unimaginably cold. You yes. can't believe it's earth. And the Bills, you know, for a long time, have been this really steady organization, and it gives a lot of the people in the town a, a, something positive there. Um, so for them to go and do something positive for a, an opponent, um, it was really, really moving. This isn't the first time they've done it. But let's play. They did. They searched out and they found he had been in contact with and he cared about a charity called Blessings in a Backpack. Right. And they would just make sure that kids have food. And at one point in this video, pay attention to her. She says there's a lot of kids in the area who get fed on Friday afternoon and then they eat again on Monday at school. And that's it. Ugh. So here's the story. Watch this video. First what okay, hold on, hold on, hold up, mom. hold on. I mean, you're not near a window. There's not a lamp you can turn on. I mean, has no one, has she ever done a video before? She runs the charity. She's a, an amazing woman. <laughs> She's an amazing woman. Okay, one of two things is at play. The here. kitchen light's not on. You're not getting a little bit from a bedroom. Either she is just wildly um, uh, naive when it comes to filming stuff, like beyond even you and me. Right. Or sh this is like a secret middle finger, right? Because that's too dark. You, someone that's has my a, point. Someone has a lamp. So she, either she is angry at something. She's like this. Look. Just gonna go darker than you could possibly, or she's just you know, beyond naive. Because that's that, I've never seen anything. And by the way, um, as you'll see, she ne it never gets corrected. <laughs> Let's continue. Phone was blowing up. Those notifications were coming from the website of the Louisville chapter of Blessings in a Backpack, where Kim Holsclaw serves as the managing director. I get an email <laughs> from donates through our website. So it was just constant <laughs> emails. and um... The alerts could be heard going off all throughout our interview, more than 10,000 as of Sunday evening. But what's even more surprising than the number is where they came from. 
first of all, I had to look twice because I'm thinking these donations are coming from Bill's fans. That doesn't make sense. And then I, you know, realized what was going on, and I was just amazed. Well, you got Jackson, who's down on top of everything. That's the Bill's play. Fans took to Reddit and Twitter after Lamar Jackson was taken off the field with a possible concussion during Saturday night's loss to the Buffalo Bills. They were trying to figure out what his favorite charity was. And when they did, they flooded it with donations, totaling more than a quarter of a million dollars. Pulseclaw says it couldn't come at a better time. With the pandemic, obviously, fundraising efforts have been cut short. Um, In-person fundraising events are out the window. Blessings in a Backpack provides meals on the weekends to children who qualify for the reduced lunch program at school. Most of the kids go 65 hours from the time they leave school on Friday until they return on Monday with nothing to eat. The pandemic has only made those numbers worse. Nationwide, the number of children facing food insecurity rose from 11 to 18 million. In Louisville, that number is now around 100,000. You know, they're really making a difference in the lives of the kids that we serve. And by the way, that she said a quarter of a million is up to 360,000. Oh my God. Which is insane. And they did this before when Andy Dalton and the Cincinnati Bengals won a game that let the Bills into the playoffs. Right. They did that for Andy Dalton's charity. And it's an amazing thing. Yeah. No, good on you, Buffalo people. Agreed. Um, I, I had a little bit of exposure to that, that idea that these kids literally won't eat. Yeah. And I, it, I, I was like, well, come on. I mean, this everyone, is America. Everyone has the ability to. But then um, my daughter went to. Uh, LA Unified here um, and you know Venice where I live is very strange because there's unbelievable wealth I mean right. tech, tech Google guys and you know Bezos has a home there and lots of celebrities but it's also very strange that was a that was a humble brag if I could just butt well, in but hold on I live in a neighborhood where super mega billionaires live well it's a very strange place it, it's um, because yes there are there are literal billionaires like tech billionaires and huge celebrities but there's also it's very easy for completely low income people to live there too uh, my first place in venice my next door neighbor was a out of work tweaker and on my right side was josh brolin and diane lane what? so it was it was yeah it's a really preposterous place but there were these kids you know when i would hear about how what we have to do the the in school uh, breakfast and lunch program because some kids won't eat breakfast if they want right. and i was like how is that how is that possible so they had a spokesperson talk about it and she said it's not it's not just a matter of funding it's a matter of that most of these families if there is two parents in the house uh which is usually not the case one of the parents is working four jobs they can't yeah. possibly have the time to provide the food and it just it all hit me like that i was like oh man i guess it's rough yeah it's it's a uh, it's very very sad so good on you bill's mafia yeah good on you bill's mafia here's another really great story um you don't have any tattoos do you no okay um they don't feel good no i've right? heard there's pain they, there is pain um oh it varies greatly but um they're they're not easy to deal with especially large ones they take a tremendous amount of time and it's just nagging pain for hours and hours and hours on end. Um, so that's why it really touched my heart when I found out that this father in Canada, he saw that his son was super duper embarrassed about this rather large birthmark that he has kind of in his torso area mm -hmm. and it's big, it's uh, basketball size, you know? And so he thought of a very uh, unique and I thought of I thought genius way to deal with that and help him with the embarrassment. So check out check out this video. Oh, it's just photos. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Because, you know, honestly, I you know I could just spit out this story and give you give you the lowdown. Thirty hours. Thirty three zero. Thirty hours. The longest session being a six hour session in and of itself, where this father got digital scans of his son's birthmark and then had it completely replicated by a tattoo shop uh to be put on his body so um that the kid wouldn't feel so so ashamed of, of having that and uh the son said you know the mind of a child it's so pure he said uh 
yeah, um, I always knew that people were staring at me because of my birthmark. And it's like, now it's great because people will be staring at both of us. <laughs> he's fine being part of it. Yeah. As long as he's got a friend. And it showed, um, it showed uh, that uh, essentially the take-home message, at least according to the dad, was that um, he doesn't have to know what people think about him. He doesn't have to care. The common denominator is it's okay to be different. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. I that's mean, a really amazing thing to do, that extra step. You can tell them that all you want. You would do whatever it took for your kids, your parenting. You, um, you know, I've always respected, honestly, not to get too, again, too, uh, too cutesy about stuff, but uh, even back before I was a parent when we first started at Kevin, when I first started at Kevin and Bean, I was always amazed that, like, you, um, you like, enjoyed being around your kids. Love. To, to a tremendous extent. Because you like concerts and you like to, the parties and all that, but you would your favorite thing. And back then, your twins were young. Yeah, um, you're like, no, I just want to, I want to hang out with me. And you were always yeah. such a devoted dad. And you understood it when you had a daughter. One, once I, um, once I had my own daughter, I, I, I definitely understood. But you, you definitely want to do whatever you can to make your kids' life not painful. I thought that this was a, a step beyond because it was so clever. Yeah. Oh, it you is, know? and it took a lot of work, dude. And a, and a pretty solid tattoo. Like, if you look at, like, the little nuances yeah. of, around it and everything, it's a, a very impressive detailing of that kid's gigantic birthmark. That's pretty cool. That yeah. is great news. Uh, my next one is a woman in Tucson, Arizona, mm -hmm. who decided that it was a difficult year last year, of course, because of the pandemic and the economic downturn and everything else. And she said, you know what? I, wanna, I hear that there are a lot of people that are getting kicked out of their houses. Yeah. And I want to keep a family in their house. And how can I help? And here's the video. One act of kindness has created a ripple effect and is making a world of difference for people struggling to pay rent here in Southern Arizona. Fox 11's Jasmine Ramirez has this heartwarming story. It all starts with one Tucson woman hoping to do something good. Now multiple families on the verge of eviction still, still have a place, place to sleep. Nora Briggs reached out to the Salvation Army to see how she could help a family facing... So I said, I want to keep a family in their house. And she did just that, through paying several months rent for a single parent with four children. She went even further and bought Christmas presents for the family too. It just gave me so much joy and excitement about Christmas since I can't be with my family in Virginia. And it was just fantastic to have this happen. Her neighbors, Patricia Waddell and Lynn Fauché, felt inspired by her kindness. When we heard Nora's story and felt her joy, really, about giving, it was very exciting to us. The two women followed suit and paid the rent of another single parent also facing eviction. You don't have to take it on all yourself if you can't. If you have five friends, that can go together and each chip in enough to pay someone's rent one month. You know, it's a great aid. The acts of kindness don't stop there. Nora's friend in Texas contacted her Salvation Army and paid the rent of someone in her community. I hope more people really take up the mantle and decide that they personally can be empowered to help. In Tucson, Jasmine Ramirez, Fox 11 News. If you would like to keep the giving spirit alive, you can contact information from the Salvation Army on our website. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool how she made the decision. She did it. And then her neighbors said, hey, I want to do that. I want to get in on that. Yeah. That's very cool. I, I think, especially taking a dive into a lot of like uplifting stories with this show, you know how crappiness and anger can, can spread. You know, it's contagious. Yeah. I, I think equally, if not more so, kindness can be. You know, if you see someone doing something like that, it motivates you and inspires you. And um, it's, it's a lot more pure, I think, than like if someone's being mean around you where it just kind of rubs off on you. This, I think, is more it, it gets in you. And yes. you're like, I, 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 I like that and I want to do the same Neighbors thing. Neighbors did the same thing. And yeah. because of that, there are families, single families, single parent families who are staying in their homes. Amazing. Beautiful. Um, I, speaking of getting in you. I don't I, like this at all. I have a story for you, Kevin. It's a, it's a short video. Okay. And it just sums up how dogs can rearrange the way you feel. Let me just, let me just ask a question. Yes. 
This is going to be our last story. Is this the last story that we want for this episode? Is this, <laughs> is this how you want to go out? Well, okay. If it makes you feel any better, I do believe we have one little extra clip after this story. Okay. So that if, that, if this isn't what you're looking for, <laughs> okay. my wife sent you another oh, embarrassing we... video for you to... Can I vote to do that instead of the I think dog? you'll like this. Okay. I think you'll like this. This is a really fat dog. Okay. And this dog says, I really want to get on the couch, but I am very fat. So this is going to be difficult. Okay. This dog struggles. When the dog is struggling, it forces him to have certain chemical reactions. Sound on everybody, please take a look at this beautiful video. Uh, <laughs> Are you kidding me? It sort of boosts him up. Like he wouldn't have made it without that. <laughs> he lifts his leg with... It's like oh, a, yeah. He's it's like, yeah. It's like a jet engine. He lost a half a pound of gas and he's like, this is... Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Come on. Admit it. That's pretty strong. <laughs> Thank you. Thank That's you. That's pretty strong. Thank you. And you can't... I, at least I feel you can't watch this video and not smile a little No, bit. agreed. And that, in my opinion, is great news. Now... I hate to move on to something that's going to bum me out. Oh, no, I'm happy about this. I don't know what this video is. All I know is that my wife sent it in to uh, the production team here. She is a big fan of doing this. She's the best, and she doesn't tell Mike what she's sending. Okay. Um, so all I know is <laughs> I'm not going to like this. Here you go. All right, pause, 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 pause. Okay. okay. I'm going to give a little background. Pause, please. She seems very disappointed before she even says a word. What is going on here? I, I don't know what is bad about this for me, but what is going on here is this is an audition that my wife and I filmed. She is, my wife's an actress. Um, we filmed at home because of the lockdown. Right. You don't go in for auditions anymore. You have to send in self-tape. So um, I have, because I'm, I suck, have become like David Fincher. Oh no. Because I'm like, no, 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 get that angle right on that. We gotta get a flashlight. We gotta get go, go, we need a pan light as well. Boom mics, the whole thing. But on top of that, I get very invested in my acting and oh. reading her lines with her. But and it's I, it's her audition. Yes, but there's usually she's in a scene with someone else. Right. So I have to I'm behind the camera. Right. Like, that person behind the camera is doesn't matter that much. That's what you think. Okay. I'm Marlon Brando in my eyes. I okay? see, okay. But uh, I don't know what I did. I did something bad. But this is me filming my wife for an audition. Here you go. Stop it. Mike. I'm trying to... Oh, Mike. <laughs> oh. I carried it in with you. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> <laughs> Wait, replay, replay, can you hear the little toot? Can you hear my toot? You're absolutely ruining her audition. You're ruining it. Replay. I want to see if you can hear my toot. You and the dog? It's open. Okay. <laughs> Are you rolling? Stop it. <laughs> Mike. What? I'm trying to... Oh. Oh, Mike. Oh. And then you carried it in with you. I didn't mean to. Oh, that's so sad for her. <laughs> I didn't mean to. It's 100% a lie. I didn't, I didn't mean to carry it in with me, but it was a nice little added benefit, a little added sure. bonus. All right. Do we have an outro? We don't have an outro. Outro. We do. Okay. Outro for today's show. Try to do better this time. By the way, if you like the show, um, please subscribe. Yes. Subscribe and then hit that little bell thing. Yep. And then sub do the little like subscribe to all. So right. that way you get a, 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 every single time we put out any content, you get a little heads up, a little notification. Put that in your song. <clears throat> make sure you subscribe, bro. And make sure you hit that little bell. Because you need to be notified when me make good news. Be notified when Kevin and Mike make great news. <laughs> I love it. Kevin and Mike are here to give you great news. Nice.